Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Easy Programming. I am Naveen Mishra and we will continue our series on Java programming. In today's video, I will cover the topics related to static members, constructors and garbage collection. Before this video, I have uh, uploaded the video tutorial for classes and objects and this will be the next video in that series. Uh, before I start this video, I would I will please ask you guys to subscribe to my channel and share these videos with your friends. Uh, okay, let's start with this video and today's topic static members. Okay, so first of all, before starting the static members, we have to understand the concept of instance variables. So, what are instance variables? The variables which are defined inside the class are called instance variables. So, if you are writing a program related to class and object and if you are placing some variables inside your class, then by default these variables are instance variables. The instance variables are allocated memory every time you create an object of that class. So every time you create an object, a new copy of such variables are created. Let's see this. For example, we have a class bank or you can use any example class student, class employee, class books, anything. So we have a class bank and we have placed a variable account number inside the bank. Now this is an instance variable. So every time I create the object of my bank class, new account number variable will be created. As you see, I have created three objects, say account one, account two, account three. Three variables can have three different values like 1001, 1002, 1003. So every time if I create the fourth object account 4 then it can have a separate value account number 1004. And right now considering the situation this is the thing that we require. But sometimes there are cases when you need only one copy of the variable irrespective of the objects you create, number of objects you create. Such variables are called static variables which are also called class variables. So if you want to create a variable whose value is shared by all the objects, then you can define such variables as static variables. Static variables belongs to class rather than object and irrespective of how many objects you create, only one copy of these variables are created and shared by all the objects. One advantage of static variable is that they are automatically initialized to zero as well. The static variables are accessible to objects. The objects can use them, they can change their value, they can assess their value. To create a static variable, during the declaration of variable, you just have to use a static keyword. Uh, let's see this. Uh, again, I am using the same example, class bank. And these are the three variables of, uh, three objects of bank. And this account number, int account number, since I have not written a static keyword here, so it is an instance variable. And every time I am creating an object, a new copy of these variables are created. Now let's say I want to count the number of objects that I have been, I have created. For this, I have used a static int count. Now this count variable is automatically initialized to zero and this value is shared by all the objects. Okay. So I will write a program for this. For this, I will use net means. So let's say uh, I, will, I will use my previous program. And here I will declare another variable like static int count underscore students. So this is a static variable and what I will do is every time a new student is created using this get data method, I will increment my count of students. Okay, that is count student increment and I will create a function word show data where I will say system dot out dot print ln number of students in the college are plus count underscore students uh, and inside this class I will create the object so I have created just one object I will create some more of it more of these objects so I, what I'll do is I will copy this code and paste it then I will replace this r1 with R2 and I will create another object and I will replace with one with the three. 
okay so this is a simple example of static variable let's try to run this while now now it is asking for roll number and name i'll say roll number 12 and name is naveen okay number of students in the college right now are one so let's create one more two and name of the students is jasmine now total number of students are three now uh, create another like uh, jason sorry the first of all i have to put the roll number 12 and then jason there you go so number of students in the college are three okay so the count variable value is shared by all the objects and they belong to class rather than the object okay so i hope I hope you guys have understood this concept of static variables, which is a very simple one. Now let's move forward with our PPT and we'll move with static functions. Now just like static variables, we can have a static functions as well. Okay. What we have to do is we just have to define a static keyword in front of the function. Uh, you guys must have uh, see this in the main function definition like public static void main so what i am trying to def uh, define there is that main function is static now static functions belongs to class rather than object and they can be called directly using the class name rather than the object name so that's why we use static keyword with the main function because we save the program with same name and when we give the instruction to compile the program the main function gets executed even without creating the object of that class okay so you can call them directly by using the class name okay now there are two rules of static function number one they can only call other static members now let's see uh, let me uh, complete this uh, slide first and then i will go to the program and they can be called by the class name you can call it using the class name and they can only call other static members okay so you just have to use the static keyword in the definition and uh, let, 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 me, let me do this for you guys so in this program I will create another function static void show count now this is a static function and I can print my static variable value here and I will remove the line from here so it works perfectly so this is a static function okay now what if I try to read something else let's say I want to print the value of roll number so I'll say roll number plus roll number let's see if it works now it is giving me an error or oh, let's study the error known static variable roll number cannot be referenced from a static context so since roll number is not static static function cannot print it okay so that's why we have to make sure that we have some static variables which can be assessed in the static function okay and in this example i can call the function like uh, show count so I'll say student dot show count so these static variables can be directly called using the class name and I will repeat this line to call the function and let's see if my program runs so there you go Row number 12 name can be anything and my static is working Roll number 13, name can be anything. Roll number 14, name can be anything. So this is an example of static function. Okay. Now static function can also be called like this one, like r2 dot show count, r3 dot show count. But r3 will be of no context as it will not assess anything related to object. Okay and it is giving you a yellow warning so assessing static method show count so it is giving you a warning message but it will still work okay you can see this so it is working fine but it's better not to use object with the show count with the static function okay so this is an example of static function or method so static variables and static methods are done and we can continue with our next topic that is constructors so what are constructors uh, constructors are used to initialize the members of a class what I'm trying to do is uh, let's say we forget to 
call this get data function and uh, let's see what will happen and what will the message printed to here actually when I created this object I have assessed these variables roll number and name but I have not given any value because I am not calling this get function but I am calling this show data function but since roll number and name does not have any value let's see what the Java compiler does so we run the file and you see here student details roll number 0 name null this is because 20th line executes and after that 23rd line executes in 20th line or in between this I have not inputted any kind of value in the roll number and name in such case Java shows you a garbage value uh, actually it doesn't show you a garbage value it initializes them to the null we will get back to this that why it is set to null okay now what I now what I'm trying to do is if I forget to call this get data function then I want to give some initial values to my variables for example roll number equals to 1 and name is equals to no name given I want to print this so for this purpose I can create a, create a constructor so constructors are basically used to initialize the members of a class and you have to call the get data function here but if you are creating the constructor then you do not have to call this function okay that is let's say I'll create a constructor here and uh, the constructor name is same as of class name this is the next point you, you can see okay and they do not have any return type not even white cannot be inherited cannot be static the virtual was in C++ not in Java and they must be defined inside the public access they can have arguments okay so these are the points uh, I'll cover it practically there so my class name is student I will create a constructor student I cannot give any other name no? this is a constructor okay system dot out dot println constructor called misspelled here okay now what I want is if the no name is given I want to show roll number one and name is equals to not given okay let's see what happened now I run this file and you see here so what are, what the constructors are basically using, using doing is if you forget to give any kind of value to your variables then constructors will give it some initial values and will show it to you so this is the main task of constructors okay constructors can be of three types default constructor parameterized constructor and copy constructor I will cover this constructors cannot have any return type so what I'm trying to do here is you cannot say a void here void actually it is working surprisingly but I don't think it need any kind of return type is it int will work void will work so void is executing but int is not working okay uh, maybe int will also work so surprisingly constructor is getting a return type but generally it doesn't happen okay uh, I will get back to about this later for initially you must memorize that there the constructors does not have any return type not even white okay so these are constructors but uh, and when these constructors are called when you create the object you write this line and this thing here the student actually is the constructor calling as soon as you write this line this constructor executes and the values are given to you okay so as soon as you create the object these constructors are called and some initial values are given to you but the point is before that we have not created any constructor we have not created but here we were not making any change so actually what are we what would what we are doing here is we are calling the constructor but have not created any constructor here okay sorry for that but we have not created any constructors here just a second
okay so actually java provides you an inbuilt constructor and if you forget to call the to put any value in your variables then it is automatically given to you by the java compiler so java compiler automatically creates a default constructor as soon as you create an object of the class and this constructor is being used so there are no garbage values in the java so this constructor is automatically created which is called a default constructor you can override this constructor by placing your own code if you do this then the java compiler will use your constructor your definition your coding that you have written in your constructor and if you do not give any kind of value sorry and if you do not give any constructor then it will use its own constructor so there are very less chances of irregular results or irrelevant results output in your program because of the missing values so there are three types of constructors first is default constructor as i have told you they do not have any return type not even void and uh, the compiler will generate this for you automatically you see here and as soon as you create the object in the main function some values are initialized to you just like default constructor you can have a parameterized constructors as well so what we can what i can do is once i have this i can create another constructor which can have two arguments and this will be called the parameterized constructor this is called default i will copy this code and change the message to parameterized constructor now roll number is set to whatever x value is given and name is set to whatever y value is given okay now here to call such constructor what you have to do is you have to pass uh, two values during the creation of your object so if you do this right now all the three times your this function will be executed that th that is this constructor will be executed let me try to run the file now as you see here first constructor was called then again default constructor was called here and again default constructor is called here and once i give some values and again the default constructor is called since you are passing no arguments always the first constructor will be executed if you want to execute this constructor you must pass some kind of values here so what i can do is i can say roll number 10 and name is chu now second constructor will be called let's try to run this let's run this file and you, you see here parameterized constructor called but i have i'm calling the get function again in just a second i will remove these get data lines okay so let's try to run the file again now you see here first of all default constructor was called and then parameterized constructors were called and when you call the get function show function it is it is giving me a value 10 and 2 and when i called uh, show data okay r3.show data then you see here it is giving me a value 1 and not given because i have not given any kind of value so this is a parameterized constructors where parameters are passed okay and you have to make sure that the number of arguments that is being passed and the data type of the arguments that is being passed must match with the definition of your constructor okay now just like c++ you can have a copy constructor as well okay so copy constructor is a constructor that does not have its own value but copies the value from some another object okay so you to execute such constructors you pass the object as argument okay so this is the syntax and let me write the program for you guys so i will create a third constructor student and in its parameters i will call the object and here i'll copy this code and i'll say copy constructor is called 
in copy constructor i want to copy the value of the object so here i'll say s1 dot roll number and s1 dot name now to call this constructor what i'll do is i will pass some object here okay now let's see what happens so you see here first of all default constructor was called and i have not called the get data here so just a second show data here i will call the show data and rerun the program now you see here first of all i am not passing any arguments so this first constructor gets executed and message default constructor call is given to me then i call this get show data function and this show data here prints me these values roll number and name next time i have called the parameterized constructor with two construct two arguments and this parameterized constructor gets executed and these values 10 and joe are initialized to the new student next time i am copying the r2 object values to my r3 object using this copy constructor the values passed here and 10 and joe values are given to me okay so this is a copy constructor okay uh, let's move forward this is the copy constructor destructors in c++ there were destructors that are the class name followed by the tilde sign which are used to free up all the memory resource used by the uh, object but in java there are no destructors because the task of destruction is performed by the java compiler automatically by using the inbuilt method named gc gc stands for garbage collection garbage collection is an inbuilt function that runs automatically at the end of the program and free all the memory resource used by your program okay you can call this function using system.gc so here i can say system.gc let's see what happens so nothing happened basically gc is a garbage collection method which will free the memory used by your program okay the problem with the garbage collection is that if your object has opened a file their file can be a phone file or a text file or any other resource these resources are not freed by your garbage collection garbage collection only free the memory now to do so now to, to free to free those files or these resources you can create a finalize in your java program finalize method is an inbuilt method which whose access is protected and it is defined inside java.lang.object class this method is called just before an object is garbage collected so before executing the garbage collection function this method is executed we can create our our own finalize method and write the code there okay and the code might belong to disposing some resources performing some cleanup operations or minimizing the memory leak so you can do anything in your finalize the task related to this okay so the finalize will look like this one okay protected void finalize and i have written a code for you guys so what i have done is i have created a class here and this is the constructor okay and i have created the object here okay so memory is created object x equals to null uh, i have shown that my uh, i i do not need the object any longer in my program and i have called this garbage collection method okay once i have collect executed the garbage collection method and printed the message end of garbage collection then i have written a finalize method as well where i have just given a message finalize method called let's see what happens now you see i have executed this program so as soon as i have write this i have written this line my class object then this inside the constructor is executed and it is printed here then i have called gc garbage collection and then this line gets executed end of garbage collection and at the end finalize method gets executed and whatever you have written here is printed to you so this is the example of garbage collection and finalize for you guys okay i have written this at override keyword because finalize is an inbuilt method if you are writing your own method then you have to write this statement at the right override okay 
that's it from this video i hope you guys have understood the topic see you in the next videos next video tutorial and please do subscribe and share to my channel and share these videos with your friends thank you very much see you in the next video cheers